This is part 55 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what's cross-site scripting attack. Cross-site scripting attack, also called as XSS attack, is a security vulnerability found mostly in web applications. Cross-site scripting attack allows hackers to inject client-side script into web pages and later, if that web page is viewed by others, the stored script gets executed. The consequences of cross-site scripting attack may range from petty nuisance like displaying an alert box to a significant security risk like stealing session cookies. With the help of that stolen session cookie, the hacker can then very easily log into a specific user's account without the need for their username and password. Let's understand cross-site scripting attack with an example. First of all, let's design a form like this where users can submit their feedback. And as part of that, we want the users to submit their name and comments. And we also want to provide the flexibility to, to, to the users to submit HTML as part of their comments. For example, let's say the user wants to you know, stress this word very good. So to stress that, he can bold and underline that. Okay, so obviously to bold and underline that we want to, you know, submit the bold and underline tag as part of the comment. Okay, once they submit that comment, we want to display it like that. Look at that, since very good is wrapped between bold and underline tag, you know, that's how it's displayed. You know, this is the submitted comment. Okay, so first let's go ahead and design this form. And obviously to store the user's comment, we need a table. So we're going to make use of this table tbl comments and this table has got three columns id which is the primary key for this table name which is going to store the name of the user who submitted that comment and the comments column itself is going to contain the submitted comment and this is the sql script to create that table i'll have the script available on my blog just in case if you need it all right so we have the required table now the next step is to actually add an ado.net entity data model based on that table TBL comments. Okay, here I have a blank ASP.NET MVC 4.0 application. So at the moment I don't have anything in the models folder. So first of all, let's go ahead and add ADO.NET Entity Data Model. And to do that, I'm going to right click on this folder, add new item, select data under install templates, ADO.NET Entity Data Model. The name of this is going to be sample data model. We want to generate our model from the database and we want our connection string to be sample db context. So this is the name that will be used to store the connection string in web.config file. Click next. This is going to connect to the database and retrieve all the tables, views and stored procedures. We are interested in TBL comments table, so let's select that. And we want our model to live in models namespace. So let's rename that to models and let's click finish. So this is going to generate an entity by name TBL comment. But we want our entity to, to actually be named as comment instead of TBL comment. So let's rename that. Let's save everything and let's build our solution. So build succeeded. The next step is to actually add the controller itself. So let's right click on the controllers folder, add a controller, and let's name our controller home controller. We're going to make use of this template, MVC controller with read slash write actions and views using entity framework. Our model is going to be our comment class, and the data context class is going to be our sample DB context class. And then we are going to make use of razor view engine. So when I click add, this is going to generate all the controller action methods as well as the views that are required. All the views for CRUD operations like create, read, update, details, etc. Alright, so here we have the views and here we have our home controller. So look at the amount of code that's generated for us. Okay, now we to submit a comment, we, we go to the create view. First of all, Let's delete the scripts section that's present at the bottom. And then let's use a div tag to set the style. So div style and let's set font family to area. Let's build the solution. 
and let's navigate to the create view so when we are on that create view let's say we want to submit a comment like this this is a very good website and I want to bold and underline this word very good okay so first of all notice this this is not a multi-line text box so let's you know first change the uh, HTML in the view to generate you know a multi-line text box instead of a single line text box so here this is the code that is generating a text box by default so instead of using editor for HTML helper I'm going to use um, text area for HTML helper save the changes and let's refresh our view this should generate a multi-line text box there we go okay now let's submit the comment so this is a very good website and we want to bold and underline this word very good so bold underline and then let's close the underline tag and then let's close the bold tag okay and let's go ahead and create this and see what's gonna happen look at that the moment I click on create it's throwing an error message and look at the error message a potentially dangerous request dot form, form value was detected from the client okay so basically it has detected that you know the HTML you know that we are trying to inject here and then by default ASP.NET MVC has thrown an exception so this is actually a security measure in place to prevent cross-site scripting attack okay so this is going to prevent even the script injection and in turn it's going to prevent cross-site scripting attack okay but here we have a legitimate reason to submit this HTML okay so in order to be able to submit this HTML there's one change that we have to do so within when I click on this create button which controller action method gets executed within the home controller this, there is create action method so this create action method responds to the get operation and this create action method responds to the HTTP post operation by default all input from the user is validated for any malicious input like you know people try to inject script HTML you know uh, by default every input is validated and if it detects you know that somebody is trying to inject HTML or JavaScript uh, it's going to throw that exception okay so we are going to disable or we are going to you know disable the input validation here and to disable the input validation we can use this attribute validate input and then we can pass you know false so we don't want to validate the input okay let's build the solution let's now submit this and see what's going to happen so this should save that data to our database table TBL employee let's actually go back to the table execute the query look at that we have that stored okay and look at this we are back at index view this is actually index view so let's actually have the complete URL there so we are on the index view now look at this this is a very good website now I have my bold and underline tags there now instead of displaying this word you know with an underline and in bold it's actually showing that you know HTML tags that we submitted by default all HTML output is encoded and this is another security measure in place to prevent cross-site scripting attack so we have to disable that HTML encoding as well okay because here we don't want that HTML to be encoded instead we want that you know basically to be interpreted and we want that word to be displayed in bold and with an underline okay so where are we now we are on the index view so let's go to the index view and then first of all let's use a div tag and set the style attribute and let's set font family to area and let's take the closing div tag and then close it at the end okay and then here is the table head which displays the headings name and comments and then here we have a for each loop which loops through each row and then displays the name and comments from that table okay so here we are using display for HTML helper um, you know and by default all HTML output is encoded and if you if you don't want that 
HTML to be encoded, then we can use another HTML helper at HTML.raw. So I'm going to make use of that HTML helper. So instead of that code, I'm going to replace that with at HTML.raw and then let's simply pass item.comments and then let's get rid of that code there. Let's build, let's go back and refresh this view. So now it displays the output as expected. Okay, so now let's see how to inject, you know, JavaScript and then initiate a cross-site scripting attack. Okay, so let's create now another comment and then let's say, you know, John is the user and then this time what I'm going to do, instead of, you know, typing some HTML, I'm going to type some script. So script type is equal to text slash JavaScript and I'm closing the script tag and for readability let's expand this so that's the script tag and here all I'm going to do is alert and then we'll output some message your site is hacked and then I'm going to close that script tag okay keep in mind we have disabled the two security measures in place okay that is you know all user input is validated but we have disabled that by using that validate input on the controller action method and all HTML output is encoded and we have disabled that as well by using at HTML dot raw okay so now let me create this so look at that you know John is the person who submitted that comment. Now if somebody goes and comes back to this index view, you know, if somebody revisits this index view, look at that. Your site is hacked. You know, this is like a petty nuisance, you know, unnecessarily uh, there is an alert box. Okay, now here the user has injected a JavaScript that simply displays an alert box, but in reality users can write JavaScript to steal session cookies. And as discussed before, with the help of that session cookie, the hacker can very easily log into a user account without the need for their username and password, and he can do destructive things. So this is a major security threat. So here now, our application is actually susceptible to cross-site scripting attacks. In our next video, we will see you know, how to prevent this cross-site scripting attack while allowing the user to submit the HTML that we want to accept. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.